Greetings and welcome to Astronomy 104 at Hack. One of the things that we've been discussing over the last few weeks, we've talked about Kepler's laws and we did a little summary of those. And we've used Kepler's third law in terms of determining mass. And we're going to talk about that a little bit over the next few chapters. And we're going to use it actually throughout the rest of the course because that is our way that we can actually determine the mass of objects in the, in the universe. It is our scale, in effect. You know, the way we can weigh things get to get their masses, determine how much matter exists in something. Now, if you recall, we talked about Kepler's third law, and Kepler's third law said that a cubed was equal to p squared. Now, this is a simplified version of the law, and just to define, a is the semi-major axis of the orbit, and p was the period. So we need to know those two numbers. The nice thing is those are two numbers that are relatively easy to measure for different objects. We can, we can usually determine the period of an object, how long it takes one object to orbit another, such as the Earth orbiting the Sun, the Sun orbiting the center of the galaxy, binary stars orbiting other planetary systems, we can easily determine each of those. So those are things we can act, that's something we can actually measure. And another thing we can measure relatively easily is the the semi-major axis. If we can see it, we can actually observe, or we can actually measure it. So we can measure how far away the you know, the Earth is from the Sun. We can measure how far away the Sun is from the center of the galaxy, and we can use that to determine the mass. Now, as I said, this is a simplified version of the equation. So the one we've been using when we say a cubed equals p squared, that's very, very, a very, very simple version. And it works for the solar system. We looked at that, and we said that for Earth and Jupiter and Saturn and Mercury, this all works out, and these are always the same. Newton gave us a more general form that actually can be used to determine the masses. Now, if you because if you look at this equation, there is no way to determine the mass. Right? All we have is the semi-major axis and the orbital period. We need, to, in order to determine the mass, which is what we want to do, we need to have an equation that involves the mass. Now let's take a look at that. And it is actually, I've put it up here for you, it actually says that the mass is equal to a cubed over p squared. So that tells us that if we know a and p, as we said, there was no problem determining the semi-major axis and the period. They were easy enough to determine. Then we can determine the mass. Now, we could look at an example here. Let's look at the Earth's orbit. And for the Earth, A is what? A is the distance of the Earth from the Sun, or one astronomical unit. P, how long does it take the Earth to orbit the Sun once? One year. Now, if we put that into our equation, then, M equals A cubed over P squared which is 1 AU cubed over 1 year squared. Now, 1 to the third power is 1. 1 to the second power is 1. So that means that the mass is equal to 1. Now the question becomes, 1 what? What is the unit here? The unit is what is the mass that the Earth is orbiting? The Earth is orbiting the Sun. So that is the mass. So when we're talking about the Earth orbit, we say that the Sun has a, unit, has a mass of 1. And we define that to be 1 solar mass, which is written as 1 m and a Sun symbol, which is a circle with a dot in the, in, in the center. So if we look at this for the Earth, we say that, okay, the, Earth's ob the Earth is orbiting an object of one solar mass. Now, 
you may think that doesn't tell us a whole lot. Okay, the sun is one solar mass. That's done by a definition. How can we use that to actually determine masses? We can do it to determine relative masses because now that we've done this, if we use astronomical units, as we did, and years, then we can determine any other system and we can tell its mass relative to that of the sun. So I could look at another star system that has either planets or multiple stars and tell you whether that star is more massive than the sun or less massive than the sun, and not just more or less, but by how much. Now before we go on to that, let's just do one more, I want to do one more example and look at Jupiter's orbit. So let's go back and look, let's look at Jupiter's orbit just as an example. Now, Jupiter has a semi-major axis of what? Jupiter's semi-major axis is about 5.2 astronomical units. So it's about five times further away from the Sun than the Earth is. So we could say that A is about 5.2 AUs. Now what is P? Period is how long it takes Jupiter to make one orbit around the Sun. How long, do, how long is that? It takes Jupiter approximately, what is it? Jupiter is about 12 years, about 11.86 years, so let's just say 12 years to make it easy, about 12 years to orbit the Sun once. Okay, so we can do the same thing again. Again, we want to determine the mass equals A cubed over P squared. And now A is 5.2 AUs, and that's cubed, divided by 12 years, and that is squared. Now, not quite as simple this time. What is 5.2 to the third power? Well, if you have a scientific calculator, you can do 5.2 to the third, and you get about 140 about 141, about I'll say about 140. So it's 140. And what is 12 squared? About 144. So 140 over 144 is, let's put that in, we get 0 0.97. And remember, we said that's solar masses. So what do we say again? We get almost exactly one solar mass. And again, a little bit of rounding as we estimate our numbers there. If we took more exact numbers, we'd get, we could get even closer. Now, so these two numbers are essentially the same. Is that good? Yes, because we're talking about the Earth, and we're talking about Jupiter, and the Earth is orbiting the Sun and Jupiter is orbiting the Sun. So we're looking for the mass of the Sun. It should come out the same. If we did this for any other planet in the solar system, we would get the same numbers. Now we don't want to do it for all of those. Let's go on and look at something a little bit different. Let's look at a star, binary star system. Let's look at the system Sirius. Sirius is a binary star system, has one star that is very, very bright, one of the brightest stars in the sky. And it has one that is very, very faint. And if we look at the numbers, we would say that after observations, we can observe that the semi-major axis of the orbit is 20 astronomical units. And the period of the orbit is about 50 years. Now you'd think we should not be getting one this time, right? The mass of the system hopefully will not be one because we are not talking about the Sun in any case. We're talking about a binary star system of Sirius. So but let's use the same equation. M is A cubed over P squared, which is 20 AUs to the third power over 50 years squared. So what is 20 to the third power? 20 to the third power, 20 times 20 times 20, would be 8,000. And what is 50 squared? 50 squared would be 2,500. 
So we get 8,000 over 2,500, and if we divide those two numbers, we get about 3.2. And remember our unit. It's always going to be, if we use years in AUs, it's in terms of the mass of the sun. So the Sirius system has a mass of 3.2 astronomical, 3.2 solar masses. That is the mass, mass we have. But now this, we kind of did things a little bit simplified. This is the mass of the system. It's actually both stars. So really, when I said m equals a cubed over p squared, I was simplifying things. This m that we use is actually m1 plus m2. So the mass of the Earth plus the mass of the Sun. The mass of Jupiter plus the mass of the Sun. The mass of Sirius A plus the mass of Sirius B. So that is what we are determining here. We determine the total mass of the system. That's not the mass of either star. But we can still get an idea. Those two stars average out more massive than the Sun pretty significantly. So I simplified everything a little bit. Why could we do that? Because when we talk about the mass of the Earth compared to the mass of the Sun, the Earth has so little mass compared to the Sun, it doesn't even matter. It's a little speck. Even Jupiter isn't that big compared to the mass of the Sun. When we're talking about two stars, each of which one is probably about one about the mass of the sun and the other one is a little bit bigger than the mass of the sun it does make a difference and we actually have to add the two together now one more example we're going to look at is the sun in the center of our galaxy so we can actually determine the mass of galaxies by this it's not just stars it's not just using planetary systems we could use a moon and a, a moon orbiting a planet to determine this too to determine the mass of the planet we talked about determining the mass of stars. Now let's determine the mass of a whole galaxy. And again, we need to know A and P. Well, A for the sun around the center of our galaxy is a pretty big number. 1.6 times 10 to the ninth astronomical units. The sun is not very close to the center of the galaxy. A lot of astronomical units, talking a bill, 1.6 billion astronomical units away. And the period is 225 million years, or 225 times 10 to the 6th years. So we're going to work with some big numbers this time. Now let's do our calculation. And if we say M now... Now again, we're going to be able to go back to use M. We don't need M1 plus M2 anymore because the sun is one solar mass. And we're going to find out that the center of the galaxy is a heck of a lot bigger than that. So it's not going to matter what the mass of the sun is. But let's do A cubed over P squared, which is A is 1.6 times 10 to the ninth AUs to the third power divided by... 225 times 10 to the 6th years squared. Now, you're going to have to put those into a scientific calculator unless you're real good at doing these numbers in your head. 1.6 times 10 to the 9th to the 3rd power is going to be 3rd is going to be 4.1 times 10 to the 27th. Really big numbers we're dealing with here. 4.1 times 10 to the 27th. And P is 225 times 10 to the 6th. And that is squared. And that gives us 5.1 times 10 to the 16th. which is equal to, let's divide those two numbers, 4.1 times 10 to the 27th divided by 5.1 times 10 to the 16th gives us about 8 times 10 to the 10th. 8 times 10 to the 10th. What's our unit? 
solar masses. So 8 times 10 to the 10th solar masses. Quite a bit of matter there. How much is that? That would be 80 I get, we get 80 billion times the mass of the sun. So 80 billion masses, 80 billion solar masses between are, are in are located in our galaxy. Quite a large number, extremely large. So a lot of matter there. Now, so hopefully that has given you a little bit of a better idea of how to go about and do these calculations. And we'll continue practicing. You'll be able to get some more examples of these in class. So for now, have a great day, and I will see you in class.